how much is an elite center worth in the NFL draft? That's the question surrounding a player like Tyler Linderbaum. The Iowa prospect is one of the best centers I've ever scouted. The way he moves to secure his first level blocks and how great his angles are makes him a perfect wide zone center. The question though is what is that really worth? Before we answer that, please do me a huge favor and like and subscribe to the channel, I would greatly appreciate it. So anyways, I mentioned this at the beginning, but Tyler Linderbaum is the single best center I've ever scouted. He's elite at securing blocks with the other interior offensive linemen on his team. His ability to swivel his hips and seal them out of the play on zone runs is second to none in this draft. He also does a fantastic job of using his hands to twist the shoulder pads and control his gap. His agility allows him to reach anywhere from a one-tech nose tackle all the way to a three-tech defensive tackle. Not many centers can do this consistently, and Linderbaum enters the NFL already with this ability. He takes amazing angles, he's very quick at helping on combo blocks, and he has an innate sense on when to peel off and help out in the second level. He also plays with a high level sustain in order to keep blocking his defender even on play action. He doesn't take a snap off. Linderbaum is the type of center you can trust to lead your offensive line. I think if there's one area of improvement for Linderbaum in his run blocking is that he needs to tone down his aggression as he hits the second level. He'll sometimes miss in space. The other thing I saw was that his size and strength don't make him a versatile player. He's an elite wide zone center, but I wouldn't draft him if I was running a gap or power scheme. Moving on to his pass blocking abilities, what's impressive is his understanding of where he needs to help out on the offensive line. He has a sixth sense for this. He moves quickly to secure the block, and when he faces a linebacker or defensive lineman one-on-one, -on -one, he's ready to mirror that pass rusher. He does a great job using his hands to stall them in their track. I love how he creates leverage by forklifting them upwards. He can get underneath their shoulder pads, and his grip strength is very high. He uses this to stop them from moving forward in the pocket and allows him to reestablish his position. His advanced stats also agree with this assessment. Linderbaum finished with a 1.6% allowed pressure rate last season. This is very good, and he was very reliable for the Hawkeyes. Now for his improvements, the major thing that stood out to me was his lack of length. This was very apparent. This shows up in both his run and pass blocking duties. Linderbaum doesn't hold up against true bull rushing nose tackles. If a lengthy nose tackle faced him one-on-one, -on -one, they had a decent shot of collapsing him backwards inside the pocket. The thing about Linderbaum is that he only has 31 and 1 inch arms. This is in the bottom 25th percentile for all centers that enter the NFL draft. This lack of length allows longer defensive linemen to keep their frame clean. Remember, it's not a lack of strength or anything like that, it's that longer defensive linemen will instantly have an advantage. At the combine, Linderbaum weighed in at under 300 pounds. While this may seem light for an NFL offensive lineman, it's not exactly unheard of. Jason Kelsey, who is the king of zone blocking, is right around the same height and weight. Now to be fair, Kelsey does have longer arms. He measured it over an inch longer in his arm length than Linderbaum. Clearly, Kelsey has been a great player for the Eagles, and knowing what we know now, he definitely wouldn't have been a sixth round pick. So, going back to the original question I posed at the start of this video, just how valuable is an elite wide zone center in the NFL Draft? This is something I'm really struggling with. I can easily see him being a top 10 center the instant he enters the NFL. A team like the Seahawks would be a perfect scheme fit and they have a top 10 pick. While this may be the case, what's interesting is that the top centers are mostly day 2 and day 3 picks. Guys like Jason Kelsey, Corey Lindsley, David Andrews, or Ben Jones were not first rounders. It seems like this is a position that you can find a player later on. I think from a team development standpoint, it might make more sense to spend an early first rounder on higher value position. The premium for a top tier center might not be worth it. With that being said though, I do think from a talent perspective, Linderbaum is a top 10 player. When he balances upside with his positional value, the earliest I'd feel comfortable taking him is in the middle of the first round. Well, that's all I have for you in this video. Next up, we'll start looking at quarterbacks. Make sure you like and subscribe to the channel and keep a lookout for those. Thanks again. You can support me directly via my Patreon in the link below. Also, you can follow me on Twitter at Samuel or Gold.